Ramblings of a man out of his depth. How do? So, can you make a guitar body out of this flexible plywood stuff? So that doesn't work. Ooh. This is the light burn software that I use to control the laser. These are all the different flexi wood patterns. I've chosen two of them and I've got a border all the way around that isn't going to get cut. Now I think that might be my downfall, but I do want to check how much this stuff flexes in the middle with a solid edging. So I'm using the Creality Falcon 2 for this. So always click frame before you set going. That way you know the laser head is actually going to fit on that piece as it goes through. You know the wood's in the right place. You don't want to get halfway through a cut and realize the laser's is going off the edge. Once you're happy, click go. And apparently that's going to take three hours. I'll go and have a cup of tea. Okay, so confessions of an impatient swine. <laughs> I turned the wick up on Lightburn from 400 millimeters a minute to 700 millimeters a minute. Um, to knock it down to about an hour and a half cutout instead of three hours. It didn't cut all the way through. That's because I didn't check first and I didn't program it properly. And that leaves us with that kind of pattern. So that cuts most of the way through, but not all the way through. You can see how it's just kind of caught on the back, um, but not actually be able to pop stuff out. So I've had this before on, on different issues where I, again, I'm trying things and seeing what out. It's got nothing to do with a laser machine. That's me setting the system. And I was given some brilliant advice once of just sanding the back off to just take that tiny little layer off and everything will come through. The problem is this is so brittle when that happens, it just puts a great big hole through the back of it. Everything just chipped off. Again, it's probably sanding too hard. Um, so that doesn't work. So I can either go back to the drawing board, but I have found I quite like the end results that I've already got. You see that curve? Isn't that quite pleasant all on its own? And the fact that it's not cut all the way through, I think will actually give it enough stability to actually be usable. Um, I, I was always a little bit worried that it would be a bit too unstable, should we say. Um, but not going all the way through that might just give us the top and back that we need mm, I don't know what to do now now I was going to try this pattern as well just for a little bit of a different look to it so we can see that's what we've got on one that's what we've got on the other so maybe if we cut this out in the same speed as this where it doesn't go all the way through Mm, and see what happens to that. That might curve in every direction. Mm. Tell you what, I'll set it up and we'll come back when it's finished cutting out this next laser sheet. Well, if nothing else, I really like the pattern on there. Makes me feel all kind of aztec -y. Now if I do that, how bog-eyed do you go? <laughs> right, let's have a look. So this one naturally curves because it's all going in a straight line. All this wants to do is curve in that direction. This one still lies flat because this pattern actually flexes in every direction. If we see the back of this, it's almost through in so many areas. Now what I'm interested in is how much of this edging around here is restricting the rest of that movement. I suspect quite a lot. So what I might do is just go to the bandsaw and just see if I can cut around that edge like an inch in from there and just see what happens to the edge of it, see if it becomes more flexible.
Right, so going all the way to the edge, not an option. Uh, instantly it chips off, but that edge does flex a lot compared to that edge. Um, so what I think I'm going to have to do is go back to the, the software, back into Lightburn, and just try and extend each of these lines as close to the edge as I can possibly get it. I think I am going to stick with this plan of using this design, because I like the look of it, without going all the way through. So it's got flex, but it's also got some stability. It's not just going to splinter and crack off, because it's still going to be a playable guitar at the end of the day. There we go, another finished cut. Again, almost cut all the way through. Look at that, I love that pattern, it's awesome. But that now goes right the way up to the edge. Um, and, and has a decent amount of flex to it without it being floppy and, and flimsy. Now, I also did that with a specific cutout that goes on the edge, because what I want to do is see when we flex this, what size change does it make? Ramblings of a man out of his depth. Let's imagine this is part of the neck through area. So I've got the fretboard would be here. That level there is where the bridge is. We're going to have a single pickup in front of it. If that sits on there, how much flex do we have? Right, okay, so that goes down to the edges there. Now, what I want is not just to pin the edges down there, but actually have a little bit of, of flat. So just like on a Les Paul, where it would come in flat and then curve up and go down, I want to see if that's possible from there. So if we glue down the edges like that, it creates quite a nice curve. We've got a flat section there, a rise over, and a flat section on the edge. That's definitely doable around this larger area. What about back here though? Well, mm, ooh, it's close. Yeah, I think we can. We can still get a little bit of a, a flare on there. I don't know. And the bit I really wanted to know is if we put an edging on like that and then flex this, how much gap? Because this has an arch on it, it just shrinks fractionally from the edge, but I think that's okay. Uh, I'll fill that with something black and it'll look very purposeful, I think. Ooh. Now you may have picked up already, I am way out of my comfort zone with this kind of precision measurement. I genuinely build chunk of wood to chunk of wood and combine the two together, very in situ. I'm not one for super measurements and working off rulers. As much as possible, I try to just work with the object. That's a very tricky thing to do when you're using a laser machine. So this is actually gonna help me to kind of embrace that style of being just a little bit more accurate, I think, because things need to be printed off accurately. Having said that, I still need to picture things in my head and see them on the floor to actually see what's going on. Um, and when you start flexing pieces of wood, how much does it shrink in? So this is what some of this testing is all about. The next thing for me is to make the neck, I think. So then we can really start to picture exactly where how this is gonna fit. So I need to head down to my local hardware store and buy some stuff. In the meantime, you watch this video here. Cheers, I'll see you soon, God bless. Sand in a bit, put a bit of Danish oil on the top. I think that's going to look really nice.